Hi folks, I'm Andy from Monthly Games, and today I'm going to be taking you through the contents of our Dungeon Saga Origins Retail Edition. So as you can see, some very nice kind of nostalgic red book type of artwork here on the front and on the rear of the box, it also shows you all of the content. I'm not going to go into the details of that because I'm going to show you it all. So let's lift off the lid. Put that over there. First thing we see is a nice little leaflet here from us at Mantic, uh, explaining about some of our other ranges, which is the Terrain Crate range. So if you really love this game and you maybe want to upgrade some of your kind of cardboard tokens to nice little plastic ones, then you can uh, take a look at our range. On the other side, a little bit of an introduction to Kings of War Ambush, which is our kind of entry level of our Kings of War mass battle fantasy game. So if you're into the fantasy dungeon crawling, you might want to upgrade to a little bit of a, um, a, a fantasy game as well. So we'll put that on one side. The next thing, the more important thing for this game, is you get a really handy quick start guide. And after having played through this myself, you can certainly learn to play 90% of the game from these kind of four pages, which basically it takes you through movement, it shows you how combat works, how shooting works, and how exploration works. So this is an excellent way to get started if you're maybe new to um, sort of tabletop games, or maybe you just want to kind of get in and have a little read and see how everything works. The next things you'll see inside the box are the rule book and the quest book. Now the rule book, again, it's um, really, really nicely laid out. Lots of nice high quality pictures showing you exactly what to do. Um, some optional bits as well at the end, so there's ways to make the game a little bit harder or even make the game a little bit easier if you've got younger or first time players. So lots of information in this book shows you exactly how to kind of carry your games on and make a, an ongoing quest or how just to run individual one-off games as well. So everything you need to know inside this book. Now this one is the Trial of Tyranny, and this is your quest, this is your adventures that you'll be playing through. Now, we will be releasing um, further expansions as well with more quests and more monsters to purchase, but inside this box there are 10 adventures in here, and you can use them to use all of the things that are inside this box. Um, nice little story that kind of follows through, explains who our four heroes are, why they're here, why they're going through the dungeons, and then this story will continue through our expansions as well. So you can definitely get a lot of kind of longevity out of this game. Now, the interesting thing with the information that is in here, most of this is kept secret from your players. If you're playing as the dungeon overlord, then you will be reading this to your players, you'll be setting up the map, you'll be setting up the dungeon for everybody to play on. However, yes, this game does play solo and it also plays cooperatively as well. And inside the box, and I'll explain in a little bit, there are cards and a system to make an AI overload. So you can play it by the cards and have a little sneaky look at the map and set up just the bits that you need to know as you progress through the dungeon. Or we have online our digital overload as well, which essentially tells you exactly what to set up without spoiling the map. And we'll come onto that in some later videos as well. So yeah, everything for your quests and your adventures is in this book here. Next up, we have our dungeon tiles, and there are three of those. Not only do we have three, they're also double-sided too. Really nice bright colors, um, without sort of losing that fantasy vibe, um, but very, very nicely um, uh, sort of um, designed as well. Now these are marked uh, A, B, and C, and then there's a side one and a side two. And I know some people like to have little individual tiles that build the dungeon as they go, but as more of an entry level game, or a kind of an easier play or a quicker to play game, we find that these are absolutely sort of essential for getting quick to play set up to your games. So for all, you've only got six different designs here, the orientation of how you turn them, where you put the blocks in there, things like bits of furniture, bits of fallen rocks to block things off, where the doors are into certain rooms, certainly kind of opens up lots and lots of possibilities. And we think that these work fantastically well. So not only does it get the game set up super fast, it also looks really cool too. So three of those. Now we get into the cool stuff, the things that people want to see, the miniatures and all of the other bits and pieces as well. So we'll just take off this little protective cover. And first thing we see here is we see our stat cards for our four heroes. So we have Rodan the Dwarf, we have Dano the Wizard, we have Madriga the Elf Ranger, 
and we have Olaf the Barbarian. Uh, and these uh, stack cards, really, really clear, really, really easy to see what you need to know at a glance. So all of your stats down the left-hand side here, track your health down the right-hand side, and some information here about what their kind of particular feats or um, sort of special abilities are as well. And on the back of those cards, there's some nice little flavor text giving you some background as to who your hero is. We then have our um, kind of our monster boss cards as well. So you can see here, we've got the zombie troll tyrant. And again, very, very easily laid out and easy to see. Heroes being red cards, bosses, um, monsters, bosses being green cards. So again, easy to tell them apart. And we also have the Undead Dwarf Lord here as well. And there's miniatures for these, obviously, inside the box as well. So yeah, again, really, really clear stats. Very easy to understand what you need to know. Now, we have a whole host of tokens. I've punched them all out already and popped them into bags here. And we'll get some nice little close-up shots. But these are all the um, things like bits of furniture, doors, secret passages... Um, sort of fallen rocks that are blocking off um, corridors and things, staircases. These are all of the, the tokens that are in those. And then I've just popped into this bag all of the kind of the play, in play type things. So gold tokens, as you discover gold, there are interrupt tokens for the overload. There's the health tokens that track down your hero's card. We've got XP tokens in here. We've got hero boom tokens. So as your hero levels up, they will get different abilities. All of these uh, tokens and things are in here as well, and they're super nice quality. Uh, inside, you also get some dice as well. So there are six blue dice and six white dice. Um, really nice quality as well, nice chunky dice, nice marble effect. And the idea of having the two different colours is if you are fighting against one of the bosses or one of the enemies, the monsters, you'll roll one colour for the heroes, one colour for the enemies, and then when you come to compare the dice, it's very easy to see whose is whose. So yeah, you get all of the dice that you will be needing as well inside the game. We then have a nice chunky pile of cards, and I'm just gonna move these to one side here as I go through and kind of, I'm not gonna go into them in detail, but I'll show you what cards we have. So, as I mentioned before about playing the game solo or cooperatively, we have what's called the AI Overload cards. And this is about what mood the, um, the, the Overload is in. It's either in an aggressive mood or a passive mood. And then we have all of the different types of cards which show that if you come up against a certain type of enemy, how they will react in any given situation. So this is excellent to allow you to be able to play sort of as a team with your other players or with your kids and have the, the, the game be controlled by a kind of an AI automated Overload. So the cards are in there as well. So like I say, um, you can play it co-op, you can play it solo, you can play it with a, with a, like a human overload as a bit of a dungeon master, but all of those kind of variations of gameplay are all inside this box. We then have a big chunk of, it says just dashing through, spell cards as well. So as we know, Dano the wizard, what, what wizard wouldn't um, be able to cast spells? So when you're setting up at the start of the game, you'll have these spell cards. You'll be able to choose the spells that your character is going to be playing. So I think there is three different types of um, spells. There's Hydromancy, there's Petty Magic, and there's Pyromancy. And essentially, I think what you do is you choose two of the three different types, and those are the spells that your wizard knows for this particular adventure. Next up, we have equipment cards. So like any kind of a dungeon delving uh, adventure, as you explore the dungeon, you will find equipment. Uh, and you'll also be able to purchase equipment. So as you find gold while you're kind of on your quest, um, in between quests, you or in between adventures, I should say, you'll be able to spend your gold and buy new equipment. So there's things in here like throwing knives, um, trap kits for disarming traps, there's a fine sword, there's a great hammer, there's thief's shoes, all sorts of cool things that you can buy to upgrade your characters. And in between the quests, it's a, it's a nice little, um, or in between the adventures again, it's a nice little kind of um, sort of shopping experience. Uh, you, can, you can be able to switch your items, you can trade items with your fellow heroes, but this is a nice way to kind of upgrade your hero for further adventures. Next up, we've got the monster cards here. And monster cards, are really just the stat cards for the individual monsters. So here we've got things like skeleton warriors, skeleton archers, we've got dwarf revenants, we've got zombies, we've got armored zombies, there's ghosts in there, there's even a zombie troll as well. So again, just like on the, uh, on the boss cards, where it's very, very clear all of the different stats that you need to know when you're fighting against them, 
these uh, monster cards have those same stats as well. And again, it shows you how many sort of points of damage you need to do to be able to take out those monsters and how sort of strong or how weak they are when they're attacking you as well. So yeah, everything is on those cards. Next up, we have legendary items. Now, legendary items are things that you might find when you're searching around during your adventures. Uh, there are things like here, like um, Dinlaf's Amulet of Warding. There's a Crucible stuff. I, I won't spoil them all. But these are legendary items, as it says on the card. And these are things that you will find as you are searching through your adventures and will certainly give you some bonuses should you find them. Then we have something called feat cards, and there's four of these. Each of your heroes has an, a, a feat that they can do, something that is a special ability that they can do once per adventure. Uh, and there are two different feats that the hero will know. So for example, uh, Madriga here has lethal aim and also has hail of arrows. And this allows uh, her to do some kind of special ability, as I said. So what you will do is at the start of the game, you will choose which of the two feats you want to take on that adventure, and then you will place that card with that with that feat facing up next to your stat card. So yeah, so four cards, four heroes, each with two feats on them. Next up, the big chunk of the deck here is the exploration cards. Now, as I mentioned before, as you're searching through the dungeon, you'll be coming up against kind of treasure chests, you'll be coming up against monsters as well. But if you get to a point where you, you're into a room, and there are no monsters there, there's nothing that's kind of um, going to be attacking you, you might think, well, I've moved, I've still got an action left to do, what can I do with that other action? Well, you can search. And when you search in uh, any given room, whoever is the dungeon uh, overlord or the AI dungeon overlord will tell you if they, first of all, find any secret passageways. If there are no secret passageways, they will tell you that you find some items. Uh, and these, uh, these exploration cards, cards basically um, simulate that. So if you find an item, you will draw the top exploration card from the deck and whatever's on that card is what you find. Now there are some cool things in here like healing potions, there are bags of gold. However, there are some bad things in here as well. So you might find traps. You might even find some marauding monsters as well. So there's some good things that you can find but there's also some bad things. So yeah, explore with caution, I would suggest. And then last but not least, we have these really nice and handy uh, sort of quick reference cards. So there is a reference card for the different actions that you can take during the game. On the other side is a summary of how traps work. Uh, and there are two of those cards. And then on the other card, there is how shoot actions work. And there are, on the other side is how fight actions work. So once you've got the basics, like, like as I said before, once you've played through that kind of... Um, sort of the quick start guide, these are the main bulk of the rules that you'll need to reference during the game in your first few games until you get used to them, but all of the information is on these cards right next to you instead of searching through the book every time. Now, last but not least, we have the really, really cool miniatures. Uh, and I'll, I'll get some nice close-up shots of these as well, so you're not kind of uh, squinting to see what's inside the box here. But what I would say is they are really nice quality sculpts. These are PVC plastic, but they're not kind of that rubbery, awful PVC that you sometimes see in games. These are really nice quality. If you looked at them for the first time, you'd assume that they're nice kind of, uh, sort of really nice quality plastic. They're single piece, so they're all ready to go. Nice and sturdy as well for little fingers when you're playing this with your uh, with your family. Uh, and as you can see here inside the box, there are four heroes who I've just mentioned the names of, and there are 18 monster models, including the bosses that we talked about before, plus these really nice, cool zombie trolls as well, which are the big ones. So if I compare the zombie troll to Roden, our dwarf, you can see there's a nice little bit of kind of size difference there. So. That's what you get in the box. We think that this is fantastic value. Um, 10 adventures that you can play through. You can play them as an ongoing quest, as I said before, with like sort of um, um, uh, picking up a uh, XP as you go, buying weapons in a nice little shop in between your adventures, upgrading your heroes, giving them hero boons, which is special abilities, and play through like one long story. Or if you and your family or your gaming group just want to play it as a one-off game, um, you can literally pick any of the different ad adventures through the book. Inside the rules, we give you a little bit of uh, advice on maybe if you're starting one of the later quests, 
the assumption is that you're kind of you leveled up a little bit so you'll be a bit stronger which makes the adventures a little bit harder so we give you an idea of well you know here's some starting gold buy yourself some equipment um, and here's some of the weapons that you might have found along the way so yeah there's definitely some um, some flexibility to how you want to play this game so yeah this is Dungeon Saga Origins, a game of dungeon quests and thrilling adventure, and we think it is perfect whether this is your first ever dungeon crawler, whether you're playing this with younger gamers in your family, or if you just want to play it with your gaming group, and it's something that maybe you might want to play instead of a game of D&D one night when not everybody can make the event, or maybe you want to play like a nice little quest over a few weeks where you're adventuring through and you want something a little bit more a bit more straightforward, not too rules heavy, not too complicated, so you can have a nice kind of beer and pretzels experience. Uh, so yes, Dungeon Saga Origins will be available at retail from the end of May 2024. So come and check it out. Mm -hmm.